if I was on a family vacation to Disney World, can I be arrested for transporting a friend or a spouse, <clears throat> sorry, into um, the state of Florida if they're undocumented? Okay, so here is, here's the thing, and let me clear that up because there's been a lot of misconception about this. It is not just for you just being in a vehicle or being driving around in Florida and having your family members or your friends. This really goes for transporting into Florida. So let's say you're coming from Georgia. So in answer to your question, if you're just in Disney and enjoying yourself, no, that's not, they can't charge you for trafficking or for smuggling. You're already in the state of Florida. We're talking about trafficking is when you're transporting from one state to another and you're entering Florida's border. So if that happens, then yes, you could be stopped and the and you could be questioned. And if it's found that you have an undocumented, whether it be a family member or friend, you could be charged with trafficking. But here's a kicker for that. It, it says that it has to be knowingly. So you have to know that that person was undocumented and um, or, or know or reasonably know that that person was undocumented. And the thing to, to remember is that if that person is has already started to file documents to remedy their situation. So maybe they've already have an asylum claim pending or their spousal petitions have already been submitted. They're just waiting for an interview or anything like that. They're covered. So this person, you, you can have that person in your vehicle, for, you know, and if they have a court date coming up or anything, but they're already in the system, then it's not a problem having that person in your vehicle. But the kicker is you have to be transporting into the States and you have to know or reasonably know that that person is undocumented. Attorney Opal Lee is the owner and founder of FlowJam Legal. Ms. Lee is a well-regarded legal expert who specializes in immigration law and provides legal and consultation services in Florida and Jamaica. Our conversation today centers on Florida's new immigration law, Senate Bill 1718, which is set to take effect on July 1st. The highly controversial law will affect thousands of people and small businesses and has already created a workforce shortage. In this interview, Ms. Lee will outline and simplify for our viewers how these new laws may impact the Caribbean diaspora and as well as immigrants from other nationalities. Thank you, Attorney Opoli, for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Following Governor DeSantis's signing of Senate Bill 1718, thousands of working class immigrants, including those that lawfully reside in the US, have chosen to leave Florida. The bill requires private businesses to check the immigration statuses of new employees using an e-verify system. Can you clarify for our viewers how this specific requirement may impact working class immigrants? including those that may or may not be undocumented. Okay, so as you rightly stated that this is really for businesses who have at least 25 or more employees. And a lot of, um, we all know, it's, known, it's, it's a well-known, it's no secret that a lot of um, the, in, in certain areas, for example, the hotel industry, the construction um, industry, um, even in the agriculture, there are a lot of people who are doing those jobs. There are immigrants who are doing those jobs because unfortunately there are US citizens and permanent residents who do not wanna do that job. So unfortunately we find that these areas and guess what, they're the ones who usually um, hire more than you know, 25 or more. And so, you know, a lot of immigrants or, or undocumented immigrants were able to feed their family from doing these jobs. Now with this threat, they're fleeing because they're like, okay, come July 1, the employees are now gonna be, employees are now gonna tighten up the, the regime, right? They're not gonna have, it's mandatory reported because these employers, if they don't do that and report in the E-Verify system, they could be fined. We're talking about maybe a third degree felony, for example. Um, and you know they're good, and not only that, they could be fined. They're gonna, you know, a lot of businesses don't wanna to have to be paying out so much money to, to these government, and um, government entities. And so that's a real, real concern. So these people are fleeing and going to what they consider to be um, safer for immigrants, right? Or more immigrant friendly states, such as New, uh, maybe New York, um, Louisiana, or they're just fleeing Florida. Even unknowingly, 
may be charged with a felony for a human smuggling. How does this provision affect mixed status families? If I was on a family vacation to Disney World, can I be arrested for transporting a friend or spouse, <clears throat> sorry, into um, the state of Florida if they're undocumented? Okay, so here is, here's the thing, and let me clear that up because there's been a lot of misconception about this. It is not just for you just being in a vehicle or being driving around in Florida and having your family members or your friends. This really goes for transporting into Florida. So let's say you're coming from Georgia. So in answer to your question, if you're just in Disney and enjoying yourself, no, that's not, they can't charge you for trafficking or for smuggling. You're already in the state of Florida. We're talking about trafficking is when you're transporting from one state to another and you're entering Florida's border. So if that happens, then yes, you could be stopped and the and you could be questioned. And if it's found that you have an undocumented, whether it be a family member or friend, you could be charged with trafficking. But here's a kicker for that. It, it says that it has to be knowingly. So you have to know that that person was undocumented and um, or, or know or reasonably know that that person was undocumented. And the thing to, to remember is that if that person is has already started to file documents to remedy their situation. So maybe they've already have an asylum claim pending or their spousal petitions have already been submitted. They're just waiting for an interview or anything like that. They're covered. So this person, you, you can have that person in your vehicle, for, you know, and if they have a court date coming up or anything, but they're already in the system, then it's not a problem having that person in your vehicle. But the kicker is you have to be transporting into the States and you have to know or reasonably know that that person is undocumented. The new law will also impact hospital care for Medicaid recipients who will now have to show documentation that they're legal residents. Many immigrants now fear that by seeking medical care, hospitals and clinics may report them to immigration authorities. Could you elaborate on the implications of this? Um, because as we know, federal law requires hospitals to treat anyone in need of emergency care regardless of immigration status. Okay, and let me start out by saying that if anyone has any medical condition, they should not hesitate whatsoever to go seek treatment. You need to go seek treatment. So yes, come July 1, because of the new bill, that the hospitals are now required to ask patients about, you know, whether they're US um, citizens or if they're in the country um, legally, because of course, as we know, the hospitals are now gonna be required to submit a report to the, to the state, right? To submit a response to the state. However, what immigration practitioners like myself have been advising everyone, whether you're a US citizen, permanent resident, or even undocumented, is to not answer that question. It is totally, you know, it's not unlawful not to answer that question. You're not required to. That's just a question you, you can't be imprisoned for not answering that question. Even as a US citizen, somebody goes there, you could just say, you decline to answer. And that will throw everybody off because now they won't know whether you're a US citizen, permanent resident, undocumented or, or otherwise. So if everybody plays that game, then I think that should help or, or alleviate that, that issue. But regardless, um, even if you do go ahead and say that you're undocumented, as you just stated, the hospitals are still required to, to treat you. You can't go there with a medical condition, especially if it's an emergency and they, and they don't seek you as long as, you know, as you said before, they accept Medicaid. So they, they have to treat you. Um, one of the things that gets me a little bit nervous though, I would prefer someone not to answer that question than to lie. Do not under any condition state that you are a US citizen. You don't want to do that. That might land you into bigger, what we call um, hot waters. So you, know, mm -hmm. but you never ever want to state that you are a US citizen. Just decline, just don't answer that question, move right on. And again, whether you're a US citizen, permanent resident or undocumented, just decline that question. Okay, thank you, all right. Now, um, additionally, the law invalidates out-of-state driver's licenses issued to undocumented immigrants. That person may be issued a citation for driving without a license. The new immigration law also makes it a felony for an undocumented immigrant to use a fake ID to get a job. Do you think an invalidated out-of-state driver's license should be considered a fake ID under these circumstances? No, it's not a fake ID, but you know what? This law is not that new per se, because 
you know, usually if you're driving in Florida with another ID, especially if you're living here, you're, the law requires you're supposed to get an ID for the state that you're residing. That's not old news. Everybody knows that from a long time, but people have been getting away with it in terms of not really saying that they're living here. And because as we know, you know, more immigrant friendly states have been issuing driver's licenses. It's just easier, right, to, to get it. And so, you know, a lot of people have been doing that because one way or the other, they have a valid driver's license. It, whether it's New York, um, it was issued, it is still a valid driver's license. So this is just, a, you know, a fight against immigrants in whatever way they can, because now you're going to have immigrants driving and um, having driving without license. Now they have a record, right? And now that's a reason to put them into proceedings, into removal proceedings. And, uh, you know, and they may have an issue even getting a bond once they're placed in these removal proceedings. So it's just really a fight against immigrants all around. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, now immigrant children have been allowed <clears throat> to work under federal government policy known as DACA. Previously, the Florida Supreme Court was allowed to admit an undocumented immigrant to the Florida bar as a licensed attorney within our state. The new law no longer allows the Florida Supreme Court to admit DACA recipients as lawyers to the Florida bar. Do you think this change will make Florida laws, law schools rather, less competitive and push overseas applicants to apply to schools in other states? Absolutely. There are so many um, students who are in Florida because Florida is known well, before that, there are a lot of state schools here, and I won't mention a name, who were, you know, immigrant friendly. They were, you know, more inclusive. You know, they diversified. And that was one of the positive things or, you know, the benefits or people saw that as one of the, the, the good things of, you know, going to law school um, here. Here it is now they're going to be fleeing. And that's just such a shame for the state because, you know what, as an attorney myself, um, who went to one of those law schools who were, you know, was known for their diversity. I just think it would be a terrible loss. I mean, I was not undocumented, but can you imagine if I were? That would be a terrible loss to Florida not to have Opal Lee, but I'm just saying. <laughs> but um, no, but with, with all seriousness, though, it is really a shame because we're talking about a brain drain. How could you have somebody who's making a positive contribution to? the Florida economy and everything, don't have any criminal record. They're going to law school for crying out loud. And you want to pull the plug on that. That just doesn't make any sense at all. Yes, okay. Well, um, I have a question. Does the new law affect the status of current green card holders in any way? Absolutely not, no, no. 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 Okay. So green card holders are, are, are fine. Lastly, the new law gives ICE, that is Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the power to obtain a DNA sample from anyone in law enforcement custody if ICE believes they are in the country illegally. Does this invasive DNA seizure have the potential to be abused? Absolutely. And I can tell you, I believe that that's going to be successfully challenged. You know, um, we're stepping on a lot of grounds here. And to be honest, I was surprised that this, you know, we, we weren't seeing like a pushback from July 1 or seeing that, you know, it was canceled. But I really think that we're stepping on a lot of toes here. And I think it's going to be definitely successfully challenged. That's an invasion of um, privacy. You also have a radio show on WZOP. Can you tell our viewers how they can tune in to listen to you? Sure. So they could, you know, go to WZOP. Um, on uh, it's 92.7, 96.1. It's each and every Saturday from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. Or they could follow us on um, Facebook, Instagram at um, Flow Jam Legal because I do post a link there on our um, business page, which is F L O as in Florida, J A M as in Jamaica. Then of course Legal, L E G A L. Okay. And um, how can they contact your office for? immigration and other legal concerns. <laughs> sure. So our telephone, we do have two offices right here in Florida. We have one downtown Fort Lauderdale at 600 South Andrews Avenue. We're on the fourth floor, suite 406. We also have an office in Lauder Hill on the west side on University Drive, which is 4727 North University Drive. And yes, we also have an office in Jamaica in the Dunrobin Plaza 
which is at 30 Dunrobin Avenue. But um, our website is www.flojamlegal.com. That's www.flojamlegal.com. And our telephone number in the United States, it's 954-358-2020. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much, Attorney Opoli, for answering our questions. They were very informative and our audience will be happy to hear from you. So uh, thank you again. All right, thank you so much. Until next time, me. all right? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.